From the moment her first daughter was born, television presenter and mother of three, Emma Willis, has been in awe of midwives. Keep it there, keep it there, keep it there. And you just kind of sit back and go, what incredible women, what an incredible job. Come on now, you can do it, keep going, keep going, keep going. That was when my mission to deliver babies began. Emma's been given a unique opportunity to find out just what it takes to work on the front line of a busy maternity unit. If you're going to do something like this, you have to do it properly. Six pound four. Wow. At a time when there is a national shortage of midwives, Emma will immerse herself on the ward for 10 weeks supporting the team. I just wanted to see if we could get some contractions going. She will share the pressures. For the emergency. Where is it? Where is it? The fears. Your heart is going. Yeah. It's coming out. It's coming out. And the joys. I've even been written up on the board. You're a dad. It's a girl. <laughs> of delivering babies. Well done, you. Oh. That's it. Big push into your bottom. She has quick babies, right? Last time she pushed her baby out with the first urge. <gasps> They've had so many incredibly sad losses. I just can't even imagine how you recover from something like that. Is baby safe? Maybe it'll be fine as long as we're quick. It's the start of another 13 hour shift for Emma. Her first job of the day is observations, and the patient is experienced mother, Julie, who was in with her husband, Kevin, and their four children. Hi, I'm Emma, the MCA. On today, is there a party going on here? Small one. <laughs> a little one? Oh, my goodness, look at you all. How old are you? How old are you? What number are you? Number three. Three. You're so cute. Wow, you love kids. Yeah. <laughs> Are they inducing you or? Yeah. But if that happens, then it'd be out. I'm very fast. Very fast. Do you know what you're having? Good boy. <gasps> you're ready for it. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. How are you feeling? I'm fine. It's, it's easy with her. She's, uh, she's brilliant at it. Obviously. Yeah. <laughs> Are you all right if I do your ops? Yeah. Thank you. Great. We have to write it down. All right. You feel all right? Do you need anything? I'm OK. Sure? Or if you've got any questions or anything. And I'll find somebody who knows the answers. <laughs> <laughs> nice to meet you. Thank you. Nice to meet you. I'll see you in a bit. Uh, Julie and I met nearly 14 years ago. There was this new bar, like, I'd never been there before. I went there and, uh, yeah, there was this beautiful blonde girl in there and she'd never been there before either, so it was by chance, really. She always wanted to be a mum. I've seen people struggle with one and two and to have four and go on to have another one. She's it's just so easy, it's like walking apart for her. It's all she's ever wanted to be. Every day, 35 to 40 mums-to-be attend the hospital's daily antenatal clinics. Good morning, antenatal clinic, Christian Midwest speaking. How can I help you? One of today's appointments is mother of three, Tara. Tara, I'm Dawn. Would you like to come through? Hi. Thank you. Hi, I'm Emma. Hi, nice hi, to Emma. meet you. Hi. You OK? Tara and her partner, Lloyd, have had 13 unsuccessful pregnancies over the last eight years. During this pregnancy, they have had regular consultations with Mr. Wee. Yeah, not too bad. Good, good. Yeah. I would say Tara was considered a very, very high-risk woman. Uh, so I was very nervous when I first was looking after her because I think, you know, I'm, I'm just hoping this time the pregnancy can go on to have a good outcome. Today's appointment yeah. is to discuss the removal of Tara's cervical stitch, which was put in to ensure that this baby would be carried to term. 
So there are no major concerns with the baby. So Good. what happens now is, you know, we will remove the stitch around 37 weeks. Once the stitch is removed, okay. do I stay here for a few hours to observe? Yeah, nine out of ten women can have a stitch removed without any energy here at all. So is it painless? I wouldn't say it's painless. No, I would say it can be uncomfortable. Nothing down there is. Uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. My worry is that the stitch is still in and my water's break that no, I go into if, if, if your water goes and your stitch is, is still inside, you come to labor ward, the doctor will just remove it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So we we'll remove the stitch at 37 weeks yeah. and we we'll induce you at 38 weeks. Yes. Okay? I'm happy for that. Okay. Yeah. Tara and Lloyd lost their last child at 22 weeks and six days. This came shortly after the death of Tara's father. Losing a baby, I think she pinned all her hopes on the baby. She sort of, because she lost her dad, she sort of saw the baby as, as uh, like a gift from him, maybe. So cool, when that happened, she was crushed after that. Having this baby is definitely helping Tara and, and, and myself, you know, because it's like looking to the future, isn't it? It's helping her, her realise that there is a life, you know, for her and for us all, after, you know, after her parents. Her history is incredibly sad, which, you know, spurs you on even more to want this pregnancy to, like, just go perfectly. Good beds together. Oh, thank you, so. Emma has been working as a maternity care assistant for five weeks now. Oh, that's better. And she's grown close to one colleague in particular. I feel like I could easily have fitted in doing this. Do you know what I mean? Like, you could. I like doing it. We could have been besties for 20 years. That's expertly done. Not too strong. No, not perfect. too weak. Not no, too many perfect. bubbles. Perfect. I met Val right at the beginning. She did a lot of my training with me. She taught me the wards. She taught me what to do when it, when it felt like it was extremely overwhelming. She'd just go, don't be stupid. What are you talking about? You'll be fine. Stop worrying about it. And you just kind of go, oh, OK. She has been here 21 years, though. She would say that. The maternity unit has a low stillbirth rate, but later this week, like all maternity care assistants, Emma will receive bereavement training. This is the uh, this is the bit I'm really not looking forward to. Like with all of the training, this is this is what's going to make me crack. I know it is. The thing is, it is a part of it. I'm cracking being already, a, yeah. And I don't <laughs> maternity <laughs> care assistant. It. For a lot of people, when they come to do this job, this is the bit that they don't realise. Yeah. They just think it's always going to be a happy event. This afternoon, Val and Emma are preparing the Star Room, a separate suite on the maternity unit for bereaved parents. Sometimes people come to work here, they've never ever really had anything, any bereavement of any description. Yeah. So, and to be honest, sometimes Neither of the parents. This will be their first bereavement of their their own child. The thought of trying to talk to somebody who has just lost their child it, is it is a, it it's feels a impossible. Yeah. I could cry just being in this room because I know what this room is for, and just the thought of it. I think Emma will find the bereavement training. Um, very useful as a part of being an MCA. It will be very emotional for her. Unfortunately, babies do die. Babies' mums do come in. They do have to go through birth knowing that their baby has died. You probably don't know, but I was too a, a bereaved mum um, 36 years ago. Oh, I was 21. Never just, had a but pregnancy no, before. No, yeah. and just thought everything would be fine. You never, ever think that you will come in and you won't take your baby home with you. It's just, it just never, ever enters your head. I remember bringing him up to my face 
And I, and I, and my memory is that he was still warm, and I can remember kissing his face and just wishing that he would wake up. I just wanted my baby. I was in shock. I was sad. What's his name? His name. I called him John. John Duncan. Um, after uh, my dad's name was Duncan and my great-grandfather's name was John. And I think it's a good, strong male name. I wanted to make a box and just put all my memories in this box. Would you like to see it? Have you got it? I have got it here. If you don't mind. No, I'll show it to you. It's a bit better. Here's a picture. Oh, as you can see, you know, he was perfectly formed. He was just a dear little sweet, sweet soul. And then this is the picture that I like, because I just think it looks like an, just a normal picture. Done it. Just like any mum just holding their baby. That's my favourite, to be honest. I just can't even imagine how you recover from something like that. Any loss, it, would, it takes time, but you will get there because you have to. Mm because life does go on. I think I might fail this bit. <laughs> you won't. Come on. I feel like I'm just gonna cry <laughs> the whole time in bereavement training. And I don't wanna, I don't wanna be the one that's just a wreck in the corner. So I've got to try and um, pull myself together before that happens. <laughs> it's just, oh God, I'm not very good with death. <laughs> Probably in the wrong place, aren't I, in a hospital? How's baby's movements been? Mother of four, Julie, has been moved to the labour ward to have her waters broken. Uh, thank you, but obviously this doesn't touch. She's been looked after by Emma and midwife Lindsay. Awesome. While the procedure is carried out by Dr. Ali. Just push your baby down into the pelvis, okay? Just like compression. Keep the pressure. It's done. We're just releasing the fluid slowly. So done. Done. Okay. Thank you. That went well. It shouldn't really take long before you have the baby. Mm -hmm. All right. She has quick babies, right? She does. She progresses quickly. <laughs> Last time she was contracted, she just got the urge to push pretty much straight away and pushed her baby out with the, the first urge. And she actually said that the last three midwives didn't have time to get their gloves and everything prepared. So should we get in and yes. get going? Perfect. Definitely. It's a midwife. Is it okay to come in? Hello. I love the fact that I wake up in the morning and I don't know who I'm going to meet. I know that I'm going to be part of someone's special day and I know that a little person's going to be entered into the world. Julie, mm -hmm. you feel the pressure? Mm -hmm. No. Okay. How's the pain changed? Can you explain to us? Um, it's in the back in front and in the last two, it just filled up into our toilet. Like to do with who? Mm. Yeah. Is that normal? So this is, yeah, rectal pressure. Yeah, it's putting yeah. her transition in. Yeah. Why don't you lift up? So, so you're not sitting down like this, you lift up. So, and then lean over the bed like this. Give that a try. I love that trust and relationship that we build up straight away. You walk into a room and within a few seconds, within a minute, that woman puts her trust in you. And for that, I feel really grateful to have that job where I'm an advocate for that lady. Lindsay and Emma have been in the room just 34 minutes, but Lindsay suspects Julie's labor has advanced rapidly. She's got a lot of pressure. The contractions have been coming a lot more frequently. Lindsay calls in fellow midwife, Wendy, for a second opinion. Where are you feeling them, Julie? Down here. Right, the front? Yeah. Oh, okay, all right. Oh, 
alright, don't panic. alright. Gas and air's there if you need it. <laughs> Slow your breathing. Okay. Slow your breathing. Big deep breath. You've in. got this. Even if mums are seasoned pros at deliveries, they can get nervous, you know? It's, it's such a big um, event. You know, and we've got to anticipate that and we've got to be ready to support them and to give them encouragement. And below it, back out, slow it down. You can do it. Mm. So it's not pressure in your bum. Where mm. are you getting pressure in your nilly? Right down the bottom. That sharp, hot poker. Sharp, yeah. Oh, God. You've got this, you know you have. Yeah? yeah? You can do it. It is different, but it's not going to be a different labour. That's what you need to tell yourself. Oh, Oh. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. No, this is coming out. It's coming out. It's coming out. It's coming out. Oh. You can do this. You know you can. I always trust the women. They know their body, particularly when the baby's on their way. They they remember that impulsive sort of involuntary pushing feeling, and you have to. You, you, in that instance, you trust the women because they've done it before. Oh, beautiful. Keep pushing down. Little pushes now. And push down. Just another little push. Beautiful. Beautiful. Yep, yeah, nearly out. Lovely. Next contraction, baby's going to come through your legs, OK? Straight through. Baby's going to... Actually, pull it out. No, don't. Oh, next wait for the next one. Got to be patient. Just six minutes after her first push and Julie's baby boy's head is born. Keep these legs nice and wide. Perfect. Yeah, I'll have a look with you. All right, look at Hello. You've got fabulous lips. Oh, you've got a lovely pout. Is it there? Yeah. Beautiful. Slowly. Push down. Amazing. Just breathe. Just breathe. It'll come on its own. Restituting. That's it. Well done. Low. Oh. Low. Low. Hello. Oh. Beautiful. That's oh. it, Linda. Onto your hands. Oh. That's it. Onto your butt. Oh. Oh. Hello. Hi. Welcome to the world. Just oh. two hours and 39 minutes since Julie's waters were broken and her son is delivered. You sound a bit gargly, don't you? Oh, oh it's fine. It's really fine. He's all right. Yeah, he's fine. Baby's absolutely fine. Should we turn you around towards me first? That's it. Well done. It's <laughs> fine. Should we get him skin to skin? Yeah. It's hard to explain that feeling. There's no feeling quite like it. You, obviously, you get so excited for your patient, but this is the moment. You're going to be a mummy, you're going to be a daddy. Seeing that head calm and knowing that new life is just about to come into the world is just incredible. You're amazing! You certainly do have babies quickly. <laughs> do you want to pick a hat? Brilliant to watch. Aww. It was just amazing so calm having you. And like, just, you know, I'm like, oh, I wish she delivered my babies. Oh, <laughs> thank you. It was lovely, thank you. <laughs> it was a pleasure. I really enjoyed it. Good. It's good having you with us. Thank you. And okay. I'm going to leave you to do yeah. like serious baby bits. Have a lovely cup of tea. You deserve Thanks. it. Thanks. <laughs> Mother of three, Tara, who has had 13 unsuccessful pregnancies, is back in the hospital. Two and a half weeks since her last appointment in the antenatal clinic. I couldn't believe it when they said you were here. She's now at 37 weeks. And it's time for the cervical stitch that has been keeping her current baby safe to be removed. Today, I knew I was rocking and rolling down there. So, so you're said, rocking and rolling? Yeah. Yeah. She's definitely trying to. I feel pressure on my bottom. I think she's coming. She's coming, yeah, she's coming, mate, definitely. 
<laughs> Look at his side, yeah. She's coming yeah. out. Seen this yeah. before. She wants to see us, yeah. So they're going to take the stitch out? Yeah. Actually, I think she's coming in in a minute, isn't she? Yeah. I'm nervous about that, though. I've never had it, so it's just the unknown, isn't it? Yeah. The what it feels I'm... like and what they do and... Yeah. There we go. Hello. Hi. Hi. <laughs> Dr. Ali will remove Tara's stitch with Emma on hand for support. Ready? Yeah. Oh. Tara, you've got to tell me if it gets very uncomfortable. Emma, would you want to just hold on to Tara's hands and and yeah, just let us know if it gets very painful, okay? Yeah. Squeeze as tight as you want. Now that Tara's stitch has been removed, her labour could begin at any moment. So, oh, thank well you. Done. Oh, that was totally thank you. Free. But with 13 losses in her past, this is a nerve wracking time for everyone. Mother of three, Tara, who has had 13 unsuccessful pregnancies, is now in labour. Can we just lay you down a bit? Is that right? No, it's okay. Following another difficult pregnancy. Okay, so I'm just going to wash you down. Okay. Midwife Trish is about to examine her to see if her cervix has dilated. Okay, tell me when you're ready. Yep. Yeah? You alright? Yeah. Cold jelly. Yeah, nice deep breaths. But she can feel that something is not right. The a cord prolapse is one of the most high-risk situations. Tara's midwife must hold the baby's head away from the cord until Tara reaches theatre, so the baby's blood and oxygen supply is not cut off. The adrenaline is running, your heart is racing, and you are only thinking about mum and baby. You've got minutes to get baby out. A cord prolapse is life-threatening to baby. Slow down a little bit, girls, please. Thank you. Right, you're they're going into the theatre. Right. But um, you wait here for now in case they're going to put her to sleep. All right? What we'll do is we'll get you changed just in case. All right, well done. Is baby safe? Baby will be fine as long as we're quick. Tara and Lloyd's baby has just minutes to live. Delivery must be in theatre and under general anaesthetic. Drink it, drink it, drink it, drink it, drink it, drink it, drink it. Sorry, my dear. All right. Okay. Can I pop your head up a second? Yeah. Keep your hands on your chest, please. Thank you. Antibiotics given. Just 31 seconds into the operation, and Tara's baby girl is born, safe and well. Eight minutes after her birth, Tara's daughter is taken to meet her dad Lloyd, who wasn't allowed to be present in theatre. Congratulations, 
Nice for you, isn't it? Beautiful. Very <laughs> smiling, but. Oh, I mean, what has happened? Oh dear, that was a shock. Yeah, I know. So that's quite normal, but it happened a lot. No, to you guys. no, no. Okay. no. It so, all turned out okay, though. I'm fine. Yeah, just okay. Just sleep. Thank um, you. I'm just gonna put myself back in there. Yeah. Right, Thanks lovely. a lot. Hello. Hello, Florence. It has been 12 minutes since the birth of baby Florence, and Emma has been tasked with checking in on Lloyd. <gasps> Are you all right? Yeah. Oh, I'm okay now. Hello. Hello. Yeah. Oh my yeah. gosh, how, she's so alert. I know, yeah, isn't she? She was like, hold on, I need to make an arrival yeah, here. It <laughs> <laughs> doesn't happen often, but it when it does, does it needs really, you know, it's an emergency. Yeah. Yeah. That's what you said, wasn't it? Is this, is this normal? Yeah, thank yeah. God for that team. A really good team. Though. Yeah. Thanks for all that. Thanks for everything. That's what we're here for. Glad it's, uh, glad it's all fine. Yeah. Congratulations. Thank you. With Lloyd caring for his newborn and Tara in recovery, it falls to Emma to deliver news of baby Florence's safe delivery to Tara's family. Hi. Hi. How are you? Okay. You're a big sister again. <laughs> Um, are you all all right? Yes, thank you. Yeah. Um, so, your little sister is here. Yeah. I've just met her with your dad. They're having a right little cuddle. Oh. Um, she's beautiful. She's adorable. She's like proper kind of, oh. like all like looking. Is she tiny? She is quite petite, yeah. yeah. Mummy's okay. Mummy's okay. She is still asleep, but they're just transferring her from theatre. Okay. And you'll be able to see them really soon. Thank okay. You. See you in a bit. Thank you. Like all maternity care assistants, Emma will undertake training throughout her time at the hospital. It's very satisfying. But there is one training element she has not been looking forward to. Today is um a day that I was hoping, I haven't been dreading it because I know that you have to do it, but I was, I suppose in a little bit of my head, I was kind of hoping I'd swerve it in some way. <laughs> but if you're living and breathing a job and walking in the steps genuinely of an MCA, then you have to do what they do. And bereavement training is, is a big part of that. Bereavement advisor Debbie is teaching a group of new maternity care assistants how to work with bereaved parents. So what we're going to do today is do a brief outline of some of the things that you'll be involved in caring for ladies who've lost babies. You might pop in there to give them a cup of tea in Star Room or you might be the one that's arrived with them in Mafu where they've first been told that there's no fetal heart. Um, they'll say to you, what will happen with my baby? If you do know, so you will know a little bit, it does reassure them. This is a pregnancy that they wanted. This was a much loved and wanted baby, irrespective of how it's ending. A death is a death. Yeah. yeah. When bereavement training was mentioned, I had a big gulp and uh, knew I'd have to go through it. Um, and it was... It was horrible. You know, it, because you, you don't want to have to think about what would be the worst experience of your life. What most people want is some recognition that my baby was here. So you guys might be asked to do anything, anything that the midwives asked to do, really. You might be asked to help dress the baby, bath the baby. Um, you might have had a rapport with the woman where actually just sit with her. If you do go into Star Room, one of the things you might be asked to do is to help set up the cuddle cot. Do you all know what a cuddle cot is? So this is a cuddle cot. You plug that in, you put some water in there, and then you attach these parts to it. And then depending on how big you want it, that part will go under the Moses basket or underneath the mattress, and then you put this part, I think it's that way, and then you put your sheet over it. And what that does is that will keep the baby cold. I just can't imagine, I can't put myself in that position. It's the most unthinkable thing in the world. Do you know what I mean? Like, how, how would you, 
how would you, how would you get over it? Like, a, a, you know, it just seems so wrong that that would happen to a baby. Miscarriage and stillbirth. Yeah. What's the difference? Right, so... Is I'm that a stupid question? No, no it's I mean, not. I, I, if you yeah. lose a baby under 24 weeks, so the baby's born dead, that's classified as a miscarriage. From 24 weeks, if the baby's born, no signs of life, the baby's born dead, that's a stillbirth. And I just kind of say for everybody, you just have to be a little bit kind to each other, not just to the woman and her family, it's to each other as well, because it can be extremely traumatic. I, I hope and pray and keep everything crossed that while I'm here, I don't experience that because I don't want anyone's baby to die. I don't want a family to lose a child, you know. So, so do I feel like it's prepared me? From a practical point of view, yes. But emotionally, like, no, nothing can prepare you for that. Nothing, I don't think anything can prepare you for any death, especially the death of a, a baby. After her bereavement course, Emma wants to talk to Val about her experience. It's just so hard to listen to, isn't it? You just don't want to hear anything to do with that or like that. But instead of in my head going, oh, just shut your ears, I don't want to listen to stuff like this, you have to listen to it because it's part of your job. So, Absolutely. Do you think that, you know, your training helped? I, I do, yeah, I do. I found it really hard when they you know, when they talk to you about, you know, how they, what they do in, with the process when, you know, they lose a baby or a baby passes away and coffin sizes and the, the kind of the practical mm. things that yeah. you may not think about what a family has to go mm. through mm. Um, because you don't want to have to think about things like that. But I think having listened to you and how upset I got, I just thought I was going to spend, you know, the few hours that the, the training was, just sobbing constantly. <laughs> um, and I didn't, I held it together <laughs> for you. Oh, right. <laughs> right, come on, stop slacking. <laughs> stop slacking, let's get on and do something. You've got work to do. Yeah, and you. Tara is awake and out of theatre and has met baby Florence for the very first time. She got here. <laughs> While Tara recovers from the effects of the general anaesthetic, midwife Debbie and Emma are coming to do Florence's first baby checks. A lot by the sounds of it. Still out there. Yeah. But I just I feel like they saved my life, baby's life. Yeah. There was a lot of people I know that. Yeah. Just rest. Two point eight five is six pound four. My last one weighed oh. six four. Thirty four centimeters. And baby's name is Florence. Florence. Oh, that's me. Shut. Oh. Oh. She's so soft. Oh, I'm sure. Come on, come on. Come on. Oh. There you go. There you go. Okay. There you go. He's your mother. <laughs> <laughs> There she is. Here's your mama. Come on, let's see what you do. <laughs> oh, she goes straight on, mate. She on. She's on already. She oh, is on. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Tara, you're a pro. <laughs> He's still really out of it, Dara. Yeah. I can't believe what's happened. I don't even really know. 
Well, that was a good team, that's so quick. Worlds apart from the labour ward, where Tara had her emergency caesarean section, is the birthing unit, where 25% of the hospital's deliveries take place each year. This is where Dan and second-time mum Rachel are heading. The birthing unit is a low-risk unit, so any woman that's not had any complications in their pregnancies, they can then deliver on the birthing unit. Rachel has been in the hospital for only 39 minutes. It's time to see the top of baby's head now. Oh, really? But with a relaxed environment and minimal intervention, it won't be long before this baby is out. Second time mum Rachel is being coached through her contractions by midwives Becky and Olivia. I particularly enjoy working on the birthing unit just because it is such a relaxed environment for women and there's less intervention. That's it, keep baby's That's head coming it, forward. Keep going. Oh. A little bit longer. Well done. Generally, the women who sort of come to the birthing unit do do really well um, and progress well in labour. Right, Rachel, take that big breath in big and big in. push into your bottom, all the way into your bottom. Rachel has been pushing for only six minutes. And her baby's head is already crowning. Big deep breath. The baby's chin. Yeah, we're nearly there. When you start to see that babies come in, you get quite excited. Um, and that sort of spurs you on to sort of reassure them and it gives them something to focus on. So with that next contraction, you give me the biggest push, and baby will yeah. be here, okay? Is that one there? Yeah. That's it, big push into your bottom. Here we go. That's it, Rachel. Well done, keep pushing. Keep going. Go on in again, Rachel. Good. Here we go. Wow, 5.49, happy birthday. Rachel's birth makes for another drug-free natural delivery on the hospital's birthing unit. With baby Eddie delivered, Emma and Val need to get the birthing suite back in working order. It's a nice, quite clean bed, isn't it? <laughs> Drop it on the edge. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Dried your hair as well as I'm, wet it. I'm feeling like a battered MCA <laughs> today. You said you were hot. Well, I know I'm hot, but you don't have to flap me in my face. Off we go. Lovely. In any given week, 
there are an average of 85 babies born at the hospital. Tara and Lloyd's baby is now a day old and ready for some visitors. Let's go and see your sister. Tara's trio of daughters have come to the maternity unit to meet their sister, Florence. Look, it's your sister. What do you think, Pearl? Her nose is a little button. Look, she's smiling, Pearl, look. Look, she's smiling at you. Oh. <laughs> ready for that? Who wants to help? Me! <laughs> you ready for that flyer? Should we keep her? Yeah. yeah. No. Hi, <laughs> <laughs> oh, look at you! <gasps> oh my gosh! Are you having... <laughs> no. Are you Lottie? Yeah. <gasps> I've been dying for them to come. Dying for this car, I was really excited. Oh. Within five minutes, I'm like, okay, you can go now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm like, like good. That. Oh. You two look like different people. Oh, yeah. I mean, I don't like know how you're weights. feeling on the inside, oh, but externally. I feel so much better now. Cup, like about 10 cups of tea. Yeah. <laughs> like, this hotel's quite good. This hotel. <laughs> <laughs> oh, go, go. Oh, oh, get oh. snuggles, get snuggles. Oh. Cuteness. Oh. Little one. She's so small. <laughs> See, this is the good bit of my job. When they cry, yeah. I think they need oh, money. Yeah, they need, <laughs> they need to come back. <laughs> she needs to smell the milk. Oh, she's searching again. <laughs> Bye. Say so thank you for looking after me. What? An incredibly wonderful woman. Like, I... I admire her beyond all belief. They've had so many incredibly sad losses. I'd, I'd, you know, give anything for a fraction of the inner strength that she must have. She's amazing. Like, absolutely incredible, incredible woman. It's just odd, the term older woman, because I'm 42. <laughs> And I had a baby at 40. Keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going. We need to push you. you know what an emergency situation means when, with a birth. It can mean you could lose the baby. You could lose mum. Isn't it incredible? <laughs> I just him. I mean, all of that in 24 hours. <laughs> <laughs>